So let's start with uh, some white oak, and I need to actually take this board that I have that's about one inch by four inch and uh, cut it down into two pieces and laminate them back together for the chop. So after marking them out, I can uh, cut them to length. They're about 20 inches long each to be laminated together and make about uh, two inch thick total. After cutting them apart, uh, I need to surface out the sides so that uh, they mate together well. Uh, basically, I just need to make one side of both of them perfectly flat. Uh, to make sure that they are flat, I use winding sticks. Uh, I love using these things. They're kind of fun and one of the first tools I ever made. But uh, they allow you to tell exactly what needs to be smoothed out. Once I have two joining sides perfectly flat and uh, ready to mate together, I can uh, glue them up and then clamp the snot out of them. <laughs> C-clamps are great. Uh, they get a lot of force, uh, but you need to protect the wood, so I have these uh, uh, disposable blocks on either side. Once I have it back into shape, I want to do a little bit of sculpting on the body. I didn't want it just to be this large rectangle. So I used a draw knife to uh, take out uh, some on the front side and the bottom and just kind of give it a bit of a shape. Then I can come in with the uh, spoke shave and refine that shape and uh, make it a little bit smoother and cleaner. After that, I go through and uh, give all the corners a chamfer. The top front gets an extremely heavy chamfer to kind of match the, uh, the bench. It also just keeps it from chipping off in the future. I need to make two nuts for the front of this vise. And I had this hunk of white oak that wasn't good for much else and it works perfectly for these. So I used a, a combination of stencils and uh, tape rolls to mark out and kind of play with the design. Basically making an S shape that uh, the S is in the middle. Then I can uh, cut them to the, a rough dimension so that I can work with a smaller piece. Just makes it a little bit easier to clamp in. Before going any farther, I use the uh, brace and bit to uh, clear out the holes, uh, one on either end so I don't have to uh, sculpt those with a turning saw, and then the one in the middle. The one in the middle I had to be very careful with, um, just for the threading sake. So I drill from one side and then come back one from the other side and it gives you a really nice clean hole. These auger bits are, are great for giving you a very, very clean hole. Um, but if you go all the way through, they're going to blow out big time. So that's why I go through until I can feel the point sticking through on the other side. Then I can flip the work over. And now I have that little hole I can center the auger bit in and get an exact circle uh, matching with the other side. Gives you a very, very clean hole entry and exit on both sides. So this hole needed to be slightly smaller than the one inch screw so that I can thread it out. Now that I have all of the holes cut, I can come back in with a combination of saws to uh, sculpt the shape. I get most of it very close with this and then come in with a turning saw to make all the round curves. Now that it's basically shaped, I can start using rasps and files. I'll start with a very coarse rasp and refine the shape and then go to something finer and finer and finer until I'm using such a fine rasp that it's actually giving it a smooth surface. Now let's go on to uh, the chop. Now that I have the chop all glued up, I need to drill through to mark the holes into the bench top. So I'm actually clamping it in place so that I can drill all the way through the chop and into the bench. And then that leaves a small mark in the bench that I can then come back in and drill out the hole for the, uh, the threaded rods that have to go in. That way I can make sure that the chop is completely and perfectly in line with the holes in the bench. And uh, when I put those in, it should fit together perfectly. So I need to tap these holes in the bench so that I can screw in threaded rod. Uh, these taps you can get at uh, Amazon and other places. And uh, it's uh, very, very useful for this. Um, I can actually just put a little bit of oil on it and make sure it gets a nice clean cut all the way through. Now for the screw, I'm using a uh, one inch rod. And uh, I find it easier to screw up the rod than down the rod. That allows me to put uh, some oil on it and uh, make it a little bit of a smoother ride. Uh, as the, uh, the screw block slowly works up the, the rod. Uh, 
After that, I can glue them in place. This is very, very easy because you can just put glue under the rod and then screw it into the hole. And I like to run it in a ways and kind of work the glue all the way in. And then I'll back it out and add some more glue and uh, screw it in a little further. So I'm kind of going in until I get close to the end. And then I can back it out, add some glue, and uh, put it in the rest of the way. And I keep going until it's tight. And uh, that's never going to move again. <laughs> Now for the finish, I want to do the exact same that I did on the bench. And so that's a few coats of boiled linseed oil, letting that soak in completely. And then sealing it with a quick coat of shellac. After the shellac is dried, then five coats of a water-based poly. That will give it a film finish that should protect it for the most part from the kids. But uh, knowing my kids, no. <laughs> Uh, a little bit of paste wax on the screws make them slide a little bit easier and cleaner. So I just kind of work those into the threads and then put a nut on them to actually work it completely down in. And then it also gets paste wax inside the nut. And I'm really pleased with how well uh, these actually work. It's a very, very nice um, screw action. And a lot of fun to play with. Who am I kidding? <laughs> Now I can slide the chop on and uh, put on the screws and uh, test it for the first time. It uh, has a, a, a serious amount of clamping powder power, even with uh, just those two small screws. Um, I could not make it move. I'm very pleased with how this came out, and uh, I know the kids are going to have a lot of fun playing with this. But uh, speaking of which, let's uh, see what they think of this. Is that a vice? A vice! Did Daddy forget to put a vice on your bench? Yes! Okay, pull the cup, pull that towel off. What do you see? A vice! Uh, it is a vice. It is look like a vice. It looks like a vice! Here, you want to see how to use it? Yes! Okay, turn this way. And you put this in. A little farther. Now, turn them down. Here, now you can work on that piece of wood. <laughs> Do you like it? Yeah, screwdrivers on wood. That's what you do, bud. So there's the vice for my kids. And I have to say, this um, blew past my expectations. I was just thinking something cheap, maybe something easy, uh, something that the kids could uh, have fun with and play with. I first saw the design at WIA, uh, Woodworking America. Uh, Chris Schwarz actually had this on a Roman bench. Uh, he pulled it off of a 15th century design, um, and it was actually inset into the bench, but I wanted something set on the face. And I am really happy with how this came out. It has a, a rather impressive amount of force. Um, and, you know, I'm... I <laughs> can't... Uh, I'm moving this bench, and let's see if I can actually... No, I, I can't move it. Um, this is... <laughs> it is really, really impressive. Uh, and if it were a little higher, I might do my dovetailing on this. So I'm actually thinking about making something very similar to this uh, for my bench. And uh, so far, the kids have really been kind of enjoying it and uh, getting a chance to play with it. So it's a very simple, easy design. Um, you know, the, the box and screw to make these threads, uh, I think you can get them for like 30 bucks or so. Um, I, you can even buy them on Amazon, and they work really well. So I'm very, very pleased with this, and I'm probably going to be doing a, a few things to uh, make it my own in the future. So I hope you like this. It was really a fun one to put together, and as you can see, um, even JJ approves since he didn't have a vice on his bench to begin with. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, if you did like the video, uh, please hit like and uh, think about subscribing. Also, I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are absolutely phenomenal and a huge encouragement to me. So thank you for that. Um, if you did like this video, feel free to check out one of the others. Uh, this one right over here is actually the build of the bench. So if you want to see how I built that for the kids, click there. And until next time, have a wonderful day.